Greetings and welcome to LGR Oddware, where we're taking a look at hardware and software that is odd, forgotten, and obsolete. And today's is certainly a mixture of the three as usual. This is the iOmega Click Drive, also known as the Pocket Zip, released in 1999 as an alternative to other portable storage media. However, this one is a tiny little disc. It's pretty friggin' neat, I think. So uh, let's take a look at the Click. All right, let's do this. This is the iOmega Click Drive. Introduced in early 1999 at a suggested price of 200 US dollars for the Click Mobile Drive that interfaces using a PCM CIA card, and $250 for this external Click Drive for digital cameras bundle that connects via the parallel port. And there was also a Click Drive Plus available that bundled both of these options together into a single package for $300. And then we have the Click Discs themselves, which measure about 2 by 2.2 inches and were sold in packs of 2, 3, or 10, costing $30, $50, or $100 for each bundle, respectively. And I think the design of these things is just downright pleasant, with their metal casing and tiny mechanisms making it delightful to hold and admire. And hidden away behind this little door, you get a magnetic disc, which it uses for storage, much like you'd find in a floppy disk, but much smaller, thinner, and packed more densely with data. And of course, it's proprietary to this format. And although they were made by iOmega and were later rebranded as Pocket Zip Discs, they're not exactly the same as the more successful Zip Disk format. And they do both use magnetic floppy disk storage, but from what I gather, the exact specifics of the way the Zip and the Click Disk actually store that data differ in some way, with a bit of separation between the two formats in terms of average read-write speeds and density and all that kind of stuff. And considering the two formats were contemporaries of each other, competing for somewhat similar markets at the same time, you might ask what was the point of the Click Disk? Well, all sorts of things leading up to its launch, but eventually the idea behind the Click Disk was to provide a stopgap in terms of economics and physical size between iOmega's own Zip Disks and the increasingly popular solid state storage options like Compact Flash and Smart Media Cards, especially in the growing digital photo storage market for digital cameras. And considering a 32 megabyte compact flash card could cost around $150 in 1999, paying as little as $10 for one 40 megabyte disc was not a bad value proposition. And considering the increasing storage needs for devices like digital cameras, notebook computers, and handhelds running Windows CE, there was a race to capitalize on portable storage media. For example, by the end of 1999, you had compact flash cards, smart media cards, MMC cards, Sony memory sticks, secure digital cards, IBM micro drives, LS120 super disks, high FD disks, zip disks, and rewritable CDs, all on the market simultaneously, each of them attempting to meet wildly different storage needs at wildly different capacities and price points. Then came the humble 40 megabyte iOmega click disk, and no one cared. It's not that it wasn't impressive on a technical level, since it really was a marvel of electromechanical miniaturization. All of its circuitry, read-write heads, doors, latches, eject mechanisms, and everything else were tightly packed into something so small it could fit into a standard PC card, inserting with its eponymous click sound. But the click was met with an uphill battle from the start. In addition to the ridiculous amounts of market competition, the big problem was that you needed a dedicated click drive that cost another two to three hundred dollars, while a simple compact flash to PCM CIA adapter was only about twenty dollars. And yeah, the cards themselves were more expensive at first, but the prices on them were beginning to decrease and their capacities were growing steadily. As PC Magazine put it in December of 1999, the click drive was technically intriguing, but maybe an answer to a question not enough people are asking. So that was one reason, but another popular anecdote I've seen for the click's failure is its name, and that it invited negative association with the infamous click of death class action lawsuit over the self-destruction of zip drives. But while it is an unfortunate name in retrospect, I'm skeptical about how much the company actually cared about this potential association, considering the lawsuit was filed in 1998, half a year before the click drive was ever released. The lawsuit was settled later on in 2001, but by then iOmega had already rebranded the failed Click as the Pocket Zip in August of 2000. 
And according to iOmega PR, it was because they wanted to capitalize on the good name and brand recognition of their Zip products. A negative connotation with the Zip drive's failings was never the stated reason for the name change, as far as I can tell. But I'm sure it was something they were aware of, and changing the name was a good idea just in case. Either way, though, no matter what the name was, it didn't help much because people still weren't buying them. It didn't even help that click drives were integrated into a few consumer electronics, like the Rave MP2300 portable MP3 recorder, the Agfa ePhoto CL30 digital camera, and iOmega's own hip zip MP3 player. <laughs> That's a classic early 2000s name for you. iOmega was pretty stubborn about MP3 players being the big break pocket zip needed in 2001, making the case that the format was a rugged way to store your music. But, well, the Apple iPod thoroughly crushed that idea with its beefy hard drive storage and intense marketing, and then flash memory killed off what little market remained for the pocket zip. By 2003, you could get a 32 megabyte USB key for about $40, and with those getting cheaper and bigger all the time, iOmega pulled the plug on the click slash pocket zip drive, canceling their plans for a 100 meg version and promptly leaving the format behind. But while they abandoned the click, the adventure is just starting for us. After all, my philosophy is that all oddware deserves a second chance on LGR, so let's try out these two forms of the device, beginning with the PC card drive. And right off the bat, I'm sure you've noticed it, but this has a nice iridescent box. I'm very much a sucker for this shiny kind of packaging. Straight away inside the box, you get some legal information and a bit of troubleshooting, a quick start guide, and the iOmega software CD. And this version in particular came with Windows 95 and 98 compatible software. They also released Windows CE and 2000 later on. And you also get a single click disc in this protective little plastic case. And inside of this black box, you get a protective case for your protected discs. It's a nice, lightweight, brushed aluminum case with a rubber inside. You can fit a couple discs quite snugly right in there, with a spot for the PCM CIA card on the right. And speaking of the card, here is the card. Got that end right there that plugs into the pins on your computer or device of choice, and yeah, it's a pretty standard PC card. No power or external dongles required, you just take the click disc and insert it into the end of it, and there you go, it's ready to put in your computer. We'll use this in a moment, but in the meantime, let's take a look at the digital camera kit, which is quite a bit more involved, as you might be able to see here from the quick start guide. That's not the quickest of quick start guides I've ever seen. In fact, there's a lot of steps and a lot of components and a lot of different things to worry about. Anyway, you once again get a click disc in the package, as well as a much beefier manual and some more click software. And yeah, this was a used, refurbished model, so it doesn't have all the original packaging inside, but it does have all the components. The main one here is the iOmega Click Drive, the parallel port version. Opening this latch reveals where you insert the click disc. On the back, you can plug in adapters of various types, and along the bottom is where you attach the battery. Yep, this one is battery powered. It has a 3.6 volt nickel metal hydride rechargeable battery. That just plugs in right there, but we're not done yet. You also have the flash memory card reader, and that is really the big appeal of this particular kit, because it has slots for compact flash and smart media cards, and it attaches to the rear of the portable click drive. We'll show how that works in just a moment, but you might be wondering how do you actually connect this to a computer? Well, that's where the cradle comes into play. So you actually have to disconnect the flash memory reader and then plug in the click drive to the top of this. Or you could actually just plug it in directly to the parallel port interface, which also doubles as the cables for the cradle itself. And when you get this plugged in, it not only provides the parallel port connection to the computer and a pass through if you want to connect a printer, but also this is where the power adapter has to be plugged in. And yes, the cradle has to be powered. And this is the only way that you can charge the battery. You can't actually plug in the AC adapter to the unit itself. So you have to bring this stuff along if you want to charge it up. At the end, you're left with a less than convenient portable system, I would say. Even though it does infer portability by coming with this handy little leather click drive pouch. But really all this can fit is the bare drive itself. Doesn't hold the flash reader, doesn't hold a battery. It holds the drive, one click disc, and that's about it. Yeah, the more you unpack this, the less appealing the potential uses for this become. 
Anyway, assuming you have the three necessary components to copy over cards, you just plug in the click disc in the left side of the drive over here, and then a compact flash or smart media card over here. You just press the button, and it will immediately start the file copying process, which is one way from the flash memory card to the click disc. It took a good three and a half minutes to do a full 40-ish megabyte copy for me, but I will admit the convenience is there. It's just a one-button thing, and once you're done, there you go. You've got the contents of your memory card copied over to your iOmega Click Disk, and you're now free of the restraints of a filled memory card and are ready to go and do other digital camera things, I guess. Yay! However, for our purposes, let's go ahead and take a look at the files that it just copied over. And to do that, we'll be using this lovely IBM ThinkPad 380XD. Mmm, Windows 95. First order of business is to get the iOmega software installed. This not only contains the drivers and tools that make the disks fully accessible and all that stuff, but it provides a couple of extra programs that are quite handy and we'll be taking a look at those in just a moment. Once that's installed and the computer restarts, it's time to insert the PC card into the PC card slot. Which if you've done correctly on a PC setup like this, you'll get these little sound effects. And now we can plug in the click disk itself. It's not necessary to insert it into the drive second. However, it's actually really easy to eject the disk as you're inserting the card due to how the mechanism works. So this is what I'm doing. Anyway, once you've done that, it shows up as a removable disk drive under my computer. And there we go. Image quadruple zero one is the folder that it wrote. And here are the digital photos that I had saved on a compact flash card, which were taken on a Sony Mavica FD5 camera, which uses floppy disks. So yeah, it is not the most appropriate <laughs> thing, but you know, it doesn't matter. But yeah, with the software installed, you get access to these extra things in the pop-up menus, like the ability to format the disks in either a quick or full surface format variety as well as being able to read and write protect the disks. This is not done with a physical mechanism. You use software to prevent anyone from reading or writing to the disk that you don't want to without a password, and it'll just show up as not being there if you don't know the password. You also get some handy information added to the regular Windows properties, Windows, <laughs> Windows, Windows, yeah, whatever, these things. All sorts of stats and options that you can set that you wouldn't be able to without installing the iOmega software. One of the utilities that you get in the iOmegaWare folder is Quick Sync. And this right here is just your standard kind of backup software. You tell it what drive you want to back up to, what folders you want backed up, and how often, and it'll do that. Which, I don't want to do that, but what I do want to do is copy the contents of a compact flash card in the other PCMCIA slot, which contains a copy of Duke Nukem 3D, and transfer that directly to the click drive using the Copy Machine software, which is the other main utility this comes with. And this is just a straight up media copying utility. So you select the drive you want to copy from, and then the drive you want to copy to, which of course in this case is the click drive. And well... <laughs> oh. That's not good at all. So I'm not entirely sure what happened. Everything was reading and writing just fine until I had that second PC card slot full. So I took that card out of there and it still didn't work. Apparently this drive was just ready to die, which is a real shame. I was enjoying the crap out of it before it did. Maybe I just had a bad drive. I don't know. This is the only one that I have. So we're going to move on to the parallel port drive, which seems to be a little bit more robust. It at least isn't cramped into a PCMCIA slot. So here we go. Let's try the copy machine software once again to see if we can get Duke 3D copied from Compact Flash directly to a click disk. And yep, it works just fine. Ended up taking about nine minutes to copy around 33 megabytes of data. It copied over without hassle. No sad noises of the drive dying this time. But being that this is running over parallel, I expected it to be a little bit slower and it certainly is. This is Duke 3D running off of a click disk directly. And it's a somewhat similar experience to when I was trying to run it off of a zip drive over parallel, even though that was the Atomic Edition, this is just the regular one. This is a little bit quicker, maybe because it's a smaller game, but anyway, under ECP or EPP mode, it stutters and it's choppy here and there. It just depends on what it's loading. For instance, it takes about 17 seconds to load from the main menu to the first level. 
And then while that is loaded, it still has to access the disc every so often to bring in new sound files and the music and certain graphics and things like that. So you end up with some stuttering and lag every so often. Again, this is just kind of expected for a game like this loading from a disc over a parallel port. But it's perfectly playable and, you know, it's just something stupid to mess with because, I don't know, I like loading Duke 3D off of obsolete media. I don't really care what the results are, it just amuses me to see it happen. I know that the PC card would be faster, I just, uh, it sucks that that thing died in the middle of testing. Ah well, Recreascat Impace, flimsy PC card. Long live the slower but more robust parallel port click drive. Well, that's pretty much it for the pocket zip slash click disk drive. And you know what? I really like this. And just in the sense of the way it's designed and built, the form factor, the shape, the mechanism, the fact that there's a floppy diskette and magnetic media in there, it's just neat. And uh, in retrospect, it's just a lot of fun. I, I like screwing around with this. However, I can also see why it wasn't a success in any sense of the word. Uh, in fact, I can't even find any hard sales numbers like units sold or how many were left unsold, but it's my guess that there were a lot of them left unsold because uh, from what I gather, a ton of people that ended up buying these around you know 2002 or three or four, it got them when they were on clearance and just like stuck in bargain bins. And I would be curious to hear if you had any experience with this back in the day when it was still fresh because I didn't. I don't even remember seeing this on store shelves. Um, then again, I wasn't paying too much attention. I was pretty much just uh, happy playing Need for Speed high stakes. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, then awesome. Perhaps you would like to see some of my other LGR Oddware episodes. For instance, I've covered the iOmega zip drive in the past, and I'm sure I'll cover more iOmega stuff in the future. They were a fascinating company that did a lot of fascinating things back in the day. I just think this stuff is neat, and if you do too, you're in the right spot. Either way, though, there are new episodes coming every Monday and Friday here on LGR. And as always, thank you very much for watching.